Hey guys, and welcome to this tips episode of Digital Classroom, made possible by BenQ and Roke. Now, a lot of people ask me like, okay, Frank, we use a light meter and we use incident meter reading. That means that you actually hold the light meter in front of the area you want correctly lit. You look at the screen and if it tells you F8, you set your camera on F8 and your subject is actually correctly lit. But how do you use that spot metering and is that important? It's very important. And today I'm going to give you an example. Now, yesterday we did a workshop with Nadine in Germany. And there was one scene when, there were actually several scenes, but one scene when there was a lot of um, dynamic range. Now, if you were shooting without a model, you could of course choose to shoot this in HDR. Now, what is HDR? It means that you take, for example, three exposures. One exposure is dead on. The other one is two stops over, the other one is two stops down. You put them together in Lightroom or any other program that you like and you have an HDR shot. I sometimes call HDR, by the way, highly destructive retouching because sometimes the images just look very, very weird. But in official terms, it's actually high dynamic range. Now, how do you do that when you have a model there? Well, it's important to understand some things. Your camera has a certain dynamic range. Now, for example, the Sony sensor uses a certain dynamic range, your Canon sensor or your Fuji sensor or whatever sensor, there's always a dynamic range. Now, what is the dynamic range? It's actually how much highlights it can preserve and how much detail in the blacks it can preserve with one exposure. And this also varies a little bit per ISO, but let's not make it too difficult. Let's just stay at ISO 100. Now, one of the rule of thumbs I always use is two and a half stops over for pure white, four and a half stops down for pure black. And it varies a little bit. With the new Sony sensors, for example, I can go easily three stops over for the highlights and five stops under for the blacks, even a little bit more sometimes. So where does this light meter and especially the reflective metering comes in? The reflective meter will always give you a value for 18% gray. Now, this is something I also explained, by the way, on our instructional video, Mastering the Model Shoot, the light meter. So I will link that also below for you guys. So with that spot meter, you have an incredibly powerful tool. So in the image you're going to you're gonna see in a moment, uh, you can see that the sun is directly behind Nadine and we have a very, very dark building on the right. Now, when I shoot something like this, of course, I'm using strobes, but I want to make sure that I can get some details back from the blacks. Now, I know for sure that I can never ever win from the sun because it was very bright. So metering the sky doesn't make a lot of sense. So in this case, I actually metered for the darkest area in the building. Now, let's say that the darkest area in the building will give you a meter reading reflective of 2.8. What you now know is if you shoot that scene on 2.8, 2.8 means that that area you metered will be rendered as 18% gray. Now, because you know the dynamic range of your camera, in my case, it's approximately five stops, I know that I can get away with about five stops more. So in other words, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16. So if I put my strobes on F16 and I will look at the back of my camera, I'm sure everything will look solid black. If I look on my screen of my laptop, everything will be solid black. But I know that later on in Photoshop, Lightroom, or Capture One or any RAW converter you use, I can use the shadow slider to get that detail back. And the same goes for the highlights. Now, in this case, I didn't meet the sky because the sun was right behind her. But this way you can actually determine, okay, do I want to keep details in the sky or do I want to keep details in the blacks? Now, if you would meter for the sky, it would be very easy. Let's say you spot meter the sky in the area where you want detail and it tells you this is F22. You now know, okay, if I go down three stops, or in other words, if I open up three stops, that means that I will be very, very close to that white clipping point. Now in Photoshop, Lightroom, or any other raw converter, with the highlight slider, I can still get that detail back. But I can talk about it for a very long time. I think it's easier if I just show you guys. So let's open up Capture One with that image, and I'm going to show you how to get all that detail back and how the next time, if you're on a shoot, you can actually determine for yourself where you want that detail back. Okay, so here we have the image. 
As you can see, there's a lot of dynamic range. We have the sun right behind Nadine. We have the strobe, of course, on Nadine. And here we have a lot of dark areas. Now, because I needed this correctly, I know exactly what I can get back. Now, I use Capture One, but in Lightroom you can do exactly the same. So the first thing we do is we go to the highlight slider and push it all the way to the right. Now you can see that we have a lot of our highlights back. You can never win from the sun, so don't even try it. It's important to protect those shadows, as explained before. Now if I want shadows in the whole area to come over, I can simply use my shadow slider. But this looks very unnatural and it actually, well, it doesn't give me the look that I want. So in Lightroom, you can now use the adjustment brush. In Capture One, we're simply going to create a new layer. So what I'm going to do is add a new layer and I'm just going to paint over the areas and I'm going to do it very sloppy now for you guys. Normally, of course, you do it way more precise, but I want to show you very quickly what the effect is. So let's say I want these areas a little bit more in detail. There we go. And I will just raise the shadows on those areas. There we go. And because I know the dynamic range of my camera or sensor, I can actually, with the light meter, determine very quickly how my final image will look and how much detail I can get back. But most of all, I know how to light my scene very, very quickly. And this, for a client, can make you look like a magician. So, master that light meter, know what you're doing, and you can shoot HDR with your strobes. Okay, you saw the retouch of the image. Now, what you saw me doing was actually getting detail back that's still in the shot, but it was very, very dark. By knowing the dynamic range of your camera, your client will absolutely think you're a magician because you can get detail back that was not there in the original shot. But you can also maximize the dynamic range of your camera. And this is a very, very powerful trick. So learn to use that meter. And when you are in the market for a new meter, get one with a spot meter. For example, this is the new 858 from Syconic. The 758 has a spot meter, but also the 558. So that's an older meter that you can often find online for relatively cheap. Now, what kind of spot meter? Make sure you get a spot meter that's one degree. Now, why one degree? See it as a field of view. It's a very narrow field of view. So you can actually look in the distance, aim at a certain area and make sure it's great. So let's just recapitulate very quickly. If you meter a scene and you see something that's pure white and you still want detail in that white, you spot meter that area and you open up not more than three stops on a Sony sensor. If you have another sensor, just try it out before shooting it. But on the Sony sensors, don't open up more than three stops. If you want details in the black, you meter that same scene and you don't close more than five stops. With that knowledge, it's very easy to light your model on location. If you want to know more, just leave comments below or get our light meter DVD, sorry, instructional video, and you will absolutely love it. I explain a lot about this kind of stuff and also how to use the light meter. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching. My name is Frank Dorhoff. If you like what we do, subscribe to our channel, like it, and tell other people about it. It really helps us and we can create more cool material for you guys. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.